We want to welcome you back to the Chapel Song Podcast. This is episode number two. If you joined us last week, you would have heard us talk about Joshua chapter three and keeping your feet in the water. This week, we're going to be looking at Mark chapter five and the woman with the issue of blood and just what kind of lessons of faith we can draw out from that. So this week we are in Hazemere still on our second week of house sitting and we had a great time on Sunday at um, Three Counties Vineyard Church um, and yeah we just had a, a fantastic time there, we met some great people um, and that was just so welcoming so if you are in the area in Hazemere we just uh, recommend you check out uh, Three Counties. Yeah it was um, a really yeah, really good church. Brilliant church. So today we're going to have a little look at Mark chapter 5 and in particular the woman with the issue of blood. Um, I'm sure this is uh, a piece of scripture that lots of people are very familiar with if you've been reading the Bible for any length of time. But there are so many great Mm. lessons on faith to draw out of this. So I'm just going to read a few verses and we're going to start at verse 25. So we're looking at Mark chapter 5 verse 25. And a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years had suffered many things of many physicians. She spent all that she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. When she heard of Jesus, she came behind him and touched his garment. For she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And straight away, the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. Let's quickly set the scene here. It's easy to gloss over this and not really understand the tragedy this woman had been going through for 12 years. Um, If you've read in Leviticus, I think it's chapter 15, if if there's somebody with a discharge, not particularly nice subject to talk Mm -hmm. about, or an issue of blood or some kind of bodily function that's, you know, not right, then under the Levitical law in Leviticus 15, that that person had to be isolated. Now, Mm -hmm. typically, if it was a short-term problem... You know, they'd have to go through um, the process of cleansing for seven days. Mm. This woman had been suffering this for 12 years. Mm. When somebody's going through that process of cleansing, they're not allowed to see anybody. They're not allowed to touch anybody. They're not allowed to have anybody in their home. They can't go to the temple. They can't worship. They can't go to the marketplace. They can't go to the well. They basically cannot be around anybody. And as I was reading this before, I thought... This would be like going through the pandemic on your own. Yeah, yeah. You know, being totally isolated Mm. and ostracised. Imagine not being Mm. able to have people over for dinner. You know, uh, under Shabbat, you know, on the Friday night where they would go for dinner, people would go and socialise in one another's homes. That was Mm. a massive part of Jewish culture. Mm. You know, their lives revolved around eating in one another's homes, going to the temple, enjoying each other's company. Mm. This woman had been cut off from all of that for 12 years Mm. this would have been hell on earth for this woman and everybody would have known it yeah as well this this lady you know it's not like she could go and see anybody else she she'd used all her money Mm. she had nothing um nothing left to spend and and i I suppose at this point jesus was her only hope and um i mean i just can't imagine what that would be like you know everybody looking at you thinking you're, you're dirty. Mm. No, you can't. You can't even be held. Nobody can help you. Can't um, have a relationship. Can't have a, no. Can't have a relationship. And you know, even even anything she sat on, anything she lay on, is deemed unclean. That must have been horrific. Mm. And her mental health. You know, we talk about in this physical ailment that she had, but her mental health must have been at rock bottom. Mm. You know, not having any contact with anybody for such a long time. You know, we you talk about the pandemic, and. Um, and how that we we learn how that affected people after after um, the event and how that's affected their mental health and, and you know children's mental health has, has risen and, and all these things, but this was in a time where there was no help and yeah. she couldn't go for any more help in especially you know mental health is a, a big issue now she she was on her own yeah and there was no NHS no she had to use all of her own resources mm. to it says here she'd suffered many things of many physicians so mm. not only had she spent all of her money yeah. but in the process to get healed mm. she suffered many things mm. the heartbreak the devastation mm. the loneliness the loss mm. would have been crippling for this woman yeah and you don't see that just as no. you look at this piece of scripture here because it mm. doesn't go into the background mm. but you meditate on these things for a short time look at some of the scriptures and you see this woman's going through hell yeah. on earth, mm. but hope comes yeah. and she hears of Jesus. Mm. And the first word I really want to highlight here is 
she heard of Jesus. The Bible says in Romans ten seventeen that faith comes by hearing. Mm. Imagine this woman is sitting at home, no money, no point in going to see any other doctor. She can't even afford to. There's no help. Mm. And suddenly in the darkness comes mm. this ray of light, yeah. this hope. Mm. There's a man and he's healing people indiscriminately. Mm. And he's not just healing people of, you know, blindness or lameness, but mm. every single issue this man yeah. is healing. Mm. What a beacon of hope for this woman at a absolutely. time of absolute yeah. tragedy in her yeah. life. Yeah. So it says here, when she had heard of Jesus, she came behind him in the press and touched his garment. Think about this for a minute. Under the law, this woman could have been killed for making all of these people unclean. Every single person she touched on her way to Jesus became unclean. Yeah. And they would have had to go through the process of cleansing mm. for seven days themselves. Yeah. They couldn't see anybody. They couldn't touch anybody. Mm. Their garments had to be washed and cleaned. They couldn't go to the temple. Yeah. We don't know. The story doesn't tell us how many people were in this crowd. Mm. But I can see in my mind, she's on her hands and knees and she's crawling through the dirt yeah. and she's doing everything within her power, literally taking her life in her hands yeah. to get to Jesus. Mm. She's laying everything on the line here. Mm. This is a um, a live or die moment it in is. this woman's life. Yeah. But she must have thought to herself, Do you know, it's worth me making this sacrifice that I might just get healed. Yeah. She was willing to die for this. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that puts you in perspective. If you're willing to die because you, you've tried everything, then um, she must have been in such a bad way. But also, she must have been convinced that this is the answer. Yeah. So she hears, it says, And when she heard, she came behind him and she touched his garment. This is interesting in verse 28. So the first word we looked at was she heard. Mm. And it would be good here to draw out some of the steps and stages mm. that we have to follow if we're going to receive a healing mm. or a financial miracle or something in our lives that is beyond our own capability, beyond mm. our own means, mm. and we're needing to trust God for it. Yeah, We need to understand this process she went through and almost examine our own lives and our own hearts. Think, okay, well, I'm, I haven't received what I've needed. Mm. I'm still waiting on a healing. There's so much we can draw out here. And I don't like the crude way of talking about the keys to faith or the steps of no. faith. But actually, it helps us to understand a little bit. Yeah. If you're willing to learn these steps and mm. these stages, mm. it's only going to help us to appropriate yeah. what God has done mm. for us. So first of all, she hears. And then it says in verse 20. Um, sorry, where are we now? Yeah. Verse 28. For she said... If I may touch his clothes, mm. I shall be whole. So first of all, she hears. Yeah. And then she must have believed. Yeah. So number one, really, she hears She hears about this man. Mm. Hope comes. Mm. She believes what she's hearing. Mm. She's hearing these reports. She's picking up word. And faith suddenly springs up in her heart. Yeah. But then she speaks. And this is so critical. Yeah. You know, Mark 11, 23, 24 says... You mentioned last week about the parable of the fig tree. Mm. Well, in Mark 11, 23 and 24, 23 says this, Have faith in God, for whosoever says unto this mountain, mm. be uprooted, be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart. Mm. What we say is critical, yeah. and it is so important. Mm. Because if, you're, if you've heard something biblical, mm. and if you believe something, but then you confess the wrong thing, mm. you've negated your faith. Mm. You've stopped a miracle in its tracks. Mm. If that woman had believed it and then said, but that's not for me. Yeah. I'm not going to get healed. Mm. End of the, that's, that's, it's over. It's yeah. finished. It's done. Mm. But she made a positive confession. She made a faith-filled statement. Mm. If I can touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. Mm. She dictated the terms of her own healing here. Yeah, yeah which is very, very important to do. Mm. She hears, she believes, mm. and she confesses. Mm. Now, everything's lining up for this woman at this point. Yeah. You know, she's well on the way here to receiving. And you might think, somebody listening to this might think, you know, this is too formulaic. If God just wants something done, God will do it. Mm. You know, 
miracles are in God's hands. Mm. If you believe the Bible, and we can use many, many examples here, and you believe in Scripture, mm. and that Scripture is infallible, you've got to understand the steps and stages to receiving from God. And it's here in black and white. She heard, she believed, she confessed. Yeah. Then it goes on to say that she came behind him and she touched the hem of his garment. So she, she actually acted upon her confession. Mm. She took her life in her hands. She crawled on the dirt. She pushed her way through this crowd, making loads of other people unclean in the process. And she reached out mm. and she touches the hem of his garment. Mm. She acts on what she confessed. Yeah. And you can see this process building here, can't you? Yeah, absolutely. So she, she hears, she believes what she hears, mm. she confesses what she believes, and then she acts on what mm. she's confessed. Mm. There's a lot to take in there. Let's there just is. let's say that yeah. again. Mm -hmm. She hears, mm. and you might have heard what the word has to say about healing and your situation. So she hears, she believes. You might have believed what you heard in the word. She confesses what she believes. Now you've got to start to engage your mouth. Yeah. You've got to start to speak out mm. what it is you're believing God for. So she confesses what she believes. But then she goes one stage further. She acts on what she's confessed. Mm. We've all been guilty of this, I'm sure. I'm believing God for this and then doing nothing yeah. about it. Yeah. Just sitting idly back mm. and just waiting for something to happen. Mm. But you're not pressing forward. You're not acting on your confession mm. you know you, you might be confessing that i'm healed and then lying in a sick bed all day mm. and with your body you're actually going against the confession of your mouth mm. you're not acting on what you believe mm. if you believe you're healed if you believe the word of god then you've got to put your body into motion mm. you have to act with authority and act on the confession that you're speaking i think that um an important thing here is to analyse the condition of your own heart mm. and to understand what it is that you're actually what you what you actually believe. We often look to God uh, for healing and we put everything upon his shoulders. And and often I think that we're we're just in hope. Yeah. You know, you may you may be sick, you may have a, an illness, and if we just take healing here um, and we're going, oh, God, heal me, heal me. But just understanding that he already has done it. You know, when Jesus yeah. died on a cross, he said, it is finished. And he wasn't just talking about his mission to um, heal us, uh, you know, provide um, a way out of sin and, you know, that relationship uh, between God and us that is now reconciled. Mm -hmm. His mission wasn't just about sin, it was also about your physical healing, it was about complete wholeness. And and often we don't understand that we are healed. Um and obviously this lady here, this was at a time where Jesus was still alive. He hadn't gone to the cross, but we're living in a time now where we're the other side of that. Mm -hmm. And the understanding that actually we are healed and that we have the authority to speak out um our healing yeah but it's but often we speak things out as well that it the words of, that come out of our mouth don't connect with what's actually in our hearts we're confessing things and we're not seeing things come to pass yeah and we had this discussion i think a few weeks ago about the way in which our heart is mm. and and those two things need to line up yeah she fully believed that this was her answer. Yeah. And so when she confessed it with her mouth, she received her healing. Jesus recognised the faith in that woman. Yeah. And um, we can say, you know, we can say things um, till we're blue in the face, but what is the condition of our heart? Do we fully believe or mm. are we just hoping? Yeah, that's such a powerful point. Um, on, in Mark 11, 23, 24, in verse 24, um, just as you were speaking there, I was mm. reminded of this. Um, whoever says unto this mountain, so we're talking about confessing our faith, be removed and be cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart. Mm. When I looked up the word doubt, I forget the actual Greek word, but the word doubt means to um, where your heart actually backs away from the confession of your mouth. If you've, if you've confessed mm. something with your mouth mm. and your heart doubts, there's this disconnect. Yeah. Actually, you're confessing something you don't even believe. Yeah. 
you know, in Mark chapter 4, it talks about the seed. Jesus talks about the mm. sower sows the word. This is why it's so important. You have to take the seeds yeah. of God's word and plant them in your heart. Because mm. until you've done that, until you've taken his word and it's growing roots mm. and you're forming this picture of what Christ has established in your heart, mm. you can be confessing all kinds of things that your heart actually is not on board with. Yeah. And if you speak something mm. your heart is not on board with, mm. It's not coming to pass. Yeah, absolutely. What did Paul write in Romans? With the heart one believes, mm -hmm. and, and with the mouth one confesses unto mm -hmm. salvation. But if there's a disconnect there, mm -hmm. if you're saying, yeah, I believe Jesus is my Lord and Saviour, and in your heart you're thinking, I absolutely don't believe that. Mm -hmm. you know, I don't believe in Christianity. Mm -hmm. Then you're not saved. Yeah. If you're confessing, I'm healed, I'm healed, I'm healed, and actually you're not believing it in your heart, mm -hmm. that isn't coming to pass. No. doesn't matter how much you confess it. You have to get revelation for yourself mm. we hear you know a lot of preachers and speakers and um podcasts and people telling you what you should believe mm. but putting the word in your own heart and asking the holy spirit to reveal those things to you so that you get a greater understanding that it becomes a revelation to you mm. has so much more impact yeah um than just just hearing somebody speak about these things and going right there oh that's what that's what i need to believe yeah. you truly have to know it in your in your own heart you, do. you have to get revelation because faith can't go beyond your understanding no. of the word mm. how can you believe for something mm. you don't understand mm. you could use the analogy of you know um i've put a million pounds in your bank but you might you, mm. you might today you might have no money mm. if you don't know that i've put the money in your bank you're not going to go to the cash point and make a withdrawal no. you have to know there's something in the bank to mm. make a withdrawal there's been a deposit i can take something mm. out of course you're not going to go and spend money you don't think you have no. and it's the same with the word you have to understand what christ has done on the cross yeah. you mentioned it a minute ago a mm. minute ago he's provided a um, um uh, a way out of sin yeah uh, a way to be reconciled with the Father, mm. but he's provided so much more. In mm. Isaiah 53, verse 4 and 5, it says, Surely he is born, yeah. carried, suffered, mm. accepted, uh, griefs and sorrows. Griefs is the word coily. Mm. It means literal sickness and disease, yeah. as referenced in Deuteronomy yeah. 7.15. Um, in verse 5 of um, Isaiah 53, it talks about, And by his stripes... That word stripes is the word chadbra by his physical wounds that yeah. bleed. We are healed. Mm -hmm. The word healed is rafa. Um, it means to make one whole, to mend, to be thoroughly healed. Mm -hmm. But unless you know this, yeah. and unless you've really had this assured and mm -hmm. rooted in your heart, mm -hmm. you could question, God, is it even your will to heal me? Mm -hmm. And you don't understand. It's 100% yeah. God's will. Jesus paid for it mm -hmm. on the cross. It's actually an offense mm -hmm. to say, God, is this your will? When yeah. Jesus went to such great lengths mm. to show you, yes, it's your will. Yeah. And in Mark 11, sorry, in Mark chapter 5 here, you know, it's so much God's will mm. that if you notice, Jesus didn't even pre-qualify this woman. No. She heard, she confessed, she believed, she acted on her faith. Mm. And the moment she touched his garment, mm. the power, the virtue flowed from Jesus' body into this woman yeah. and she was healed yeah. there was no is this woman holy enough has she been going to temple enough is she tithing mm. is she righteous mm. the only thing that really mattered here was is she acting in faith mm. and we fall short so often because mm. we think god is um we think god is looking at how holy we are how righteous mm. we are how good we are yeah. have we been in the word mm. we're so aware of our own sin and the own our, the own our own shortcomings and failings yeah. that we we talk ourselves out of a miracle mm. this woman touched the hem of his garment and got healed and the, and the question isn't you know um well you say like you know we take a bunch of people who are sick and they they, they may ask like why am i not healed why am i um when am i going to get healed and they're completely missing the point you know read through the gospels jesus healed all that came to him yeah. he healed everybody that was sick just it doesn't matter what the sickness was they received their healing mm. and that is the same today in fact as born again believers you are healed he doesn't leave people out he doesn't pick people that he prefers to receive their healing the fact is it is already done yeah we just need to have understanding 
and we now have a responsibility you know if we look at Jairus just before this lady um, received her healing he looked to Jesus and said well if you come and lay hands on my daughter uh, then she'll be healed he and and Jesus said okay I'll, I'll come and heal your daughter um, but there's a, such a difference between him and this lady yeah she understood that that by confessing with her mouth um, and if she could just touch him that she'd receive that healing there mm. was a, there was a difference between Jairus and his faith and the faith of this woman mm. um, he was waiting on Jesus going to her yeah and Jesus will meet you where you're at if you're um, Jesus was absolutely unless willing. you're in unbelief unless because... you're in unbelief yeah Jesus can't flow through unbelief. No. We have to have mm. faith, and that mm. faith has to be fixed in what the Scripture says. Yeah. And this is why so many people, you said a minute ago, as New Testament believers, you have to understand that you are already healed. Mm. Somebody listening to this could say, well, I've still got a sickness in my body. If you don't understand what Sarah just said about the fact that you're already healed, it's because mm. you don't know what the Bible yeah. says Jesus has done. Yeah. And I don't mean that to, I don't, I'm not saying that to belittle anybody. Or, um, but in Second Peter chapter 1, it says that his divine power has given us all things mm. that pertain to life and godliness mm. through the knowledge of him who called us by glory mm. and virtue. It's through the knowledge of his word that you understand, hold on a second, Jesus died on the cross. He's promised he's dealt with my sin and he's healed me of sickness. Mm. Okay, his word also says that he's given me everything I need for this life. Mm. How did that happen? Mm. Well, in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13, the scripture talks about that after having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit yeah. of promise. And you, when you start putting scriptures together, like in Ephesians, where it talks about he's blessed us with all spiritual mm. blessings in the heavenly places. 1 Corinthians six seventeen, he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. When you start to realize that I believed, I'm born again. Mm. I have the spirit of God in me. Yeah. And within my mm. born again spirit, God has placed everything I need. Yeah. Galatians 5.22 says we have love, joy, peace, long suffering. We have healing, mm. wholeness and everything we need from God. Mm. We don't actually need to keep no. asking God for things. No. Give me my healing. Give me my healing. Mm. He's provided for the healing mm. and he's put healing within your spirit. Mm. I can imagine some people listening to this thinking this is a bit yeah. this is a bit way yeah. out this is mm -hmm. a bit you know if God wants me healed he'll just get me healed. Mm. Well what about the woman with the issue of blood then? Mm. You no know, she had to hear she had to believe what she heard mm. she had to confess what she believed and then she had mm. to act and it was only once she had done all of those things mm. she reached out and touched she received mm. because Without her even knowing this, mm. she was actually implementing the laws of faith. faith. Yeah. And I think, I don't know everybody's personal circumstance and situation, but if you're going to act in faith, it's a universal law. Jesus said, when Peter said, look, the fig tree's dried up. Mm. Jesus said, have faith in God. Whosoever mm. says unto the mountain. Mm. This power wasn't reserved for the divine only. No. He's saying to the apostles, Whosoever yeah. implements this mm. law of faith will end up with the same results. Mm. If you confess with your mouth and you believe in your heart and you do not doubt, yeah. you will have whatsoever things you pray mm. or you ask for. Mm. Okay, well, I'm going to pray and ask for a Lamborghini. Okay, well, you don't really believe in your heart that you're going to get a Lamborghini. When no. you... And also, mm. God will provide the things that he's provided for through the finished work of Christ yeah. on the cross. Mm. One of our ministers that we really love, Andrew Womack, said, you know, your faith will only appropriate what God has provided for with grace. Yeah. If God didn't provide it through the cross, mm. through his grace, then your faith's not going to really make it work. Mm. Your faith will implement what God has provided for by grace. Mm. So you need to have a really thorough and fixed, deep understanding of what did Christ pay for on the cross. Mm. And when you're trying to, to to confess and you're trying to have faith in something it's just going back to the bible and really understanding what it is that god said about that situation yeah you know we go back to healing again now, what does god say about healing how how did it happen in jesus's day you know when he was going around healing people look at the process that these people went through mm. look at the the experiences they had how did jesus heal them 
and then stand upon what the word says. The word is the truest thing that we have, mm. not the world. Don't listen to what the world tells you. What does God say? He's our creator. He said in Isaiah, when Jesus went to the cross, that your sin was paid for, and so was your healing. If you really look at that, like you were saying earlier, if you really look at those words and what they actually meant when mm. they were written, you cannot escape the fact that he's paid for your healing. Yeah. But we need to stand upon the word. Mm. We need and to confess. And confess. Just like this woman did. Yeah, just like this lady. Because it's not enough actually sometimes just to believe. Mm. And what we're trying to explain here mm. is you need to hear, mm. you need to believe, you need to confess, you need to act, you need to receive. Mm. You've got to take what God has provided yeah. for. Yeah. Because, you, you know, you can sit on your sofa all day and think, well, if God wants me healed, I'll be healed. Mm. That's not how no. faith works. No. And we've had If many... God wants me saved, yeah. then he'll save me. That's not even no. how faith works. No. The you, confession of your mouth. You had to believe mm. in your heart and you had to confess with mm. your mouth and make Jesus your Lord. Yeah. And it's the same with healing. Absolutely. You see, we've seen a number of healings in our own family um, when we've we've just said no. We're not going to have this anymore. Jesus paid for our sickness on the cross. Mm. We are whole and we're not going to have this anymore. I remember when you had tonsillitis. Um, oh, yeah. And uh, it was bad. Really bad. Yeah. I think were... people don't realise actually how bad tonsillitis yeah. can be. Yeah. I was a mess, wasn't I? Yeah. Flu, temperature, pain, couldn't swallow, could barely drink. I was yeah. off work. Yeah. I sound like a big baby maybe. But... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was unwell you but are. there are two forms of tonsillitis now yeah. if you're thinking get over it you know you might have had the weaker version of tonsillitis either really bad. <laughs> yeah and it was it was terrible and i remember um just you you lying in bed and i'm thinking i'm not having this anymore and i got in my car and i was driving down to um our local shop and i started to command that by the time i got home that you were going to be out of bed that you were going to be walking around the house and you were going to tell me that you felt so much better. Yeah. And I got home and I, I, I said those words with absolute um, faith mm. in my heart and in my mouth. And they, these words were coming out of my mouth and I was like, right, I'm going to go to the shop, I'm going to come back and you're going to be absolutely fine. And I opened the front door, walked into the lounge and you were out of bed walking around and you told me you felt so much better. I went from feeling so ill yeah. to within minutes, mm. just like... Man, I feel great. Yeah. Within an hour, all those mm. symptoms had disappeared. Yeah. Because you'd also prayed while I was out. Yeah. So the two of us, we hadn't discussed that we were going to do mm. that. I was at home as well, commanding this sickness. Yeah. But I think it wasn't you're just right. Me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But it, it, it was that um, knowing we yeah. just knew and and not accepting this any longer. This lady. That with the issue of blood, blood, she wasn't accepting this any longer. Mm. She lived with it for far too long. We don't have to live with sickness. We can stand upon the word of God and say, no, I'm not having this anymore. And that yeah. that can be for a headache or tonsillitis or can be for something serious. Yeah. God, Jesus healed, has provided healing for all of all of it. Well, on separate, on 17 separate occasions, notwithstanding the repetition of the mm. Gospels, it says Jesus healed all who came to mm. him. You can't find one reference in scripture where Jesus no. turns somebody away. Mm. There's the woman who needed her daughter healed, who said, you know, come on, even the even the dogs eat the crumbs from the master's table. Mm. And he said, woman, great is your faith, your daughter's whole. Mm. Even when he'd put up, and he only did this because he was actually sent to the lost sheep. He was sent to the lost sheep of Israel. His mission was to go to the children of Israel first. This woman was not um, an Israelite in that sense. Mm. But even she pushed forward in her faith and confessed and drew that faith out of him, and her daughter got healed. Mm. One scripture I was thinking about there when you were talking was Hebrews 11. 1. Yeah. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. And mm. it's important to say this, faith is not hope. No. And I've realised mm. when I've prayed many times in the past, mm. I was praying in hope, mm. in desperation. I wasn't praying in faith. No. And there have been lots of times where I haven't seen any results. Mm. But lots of times I have, mm. but lots of times I haven't. And I've, I've, when I've analysed, why didn't I see a healing there? Mm. Why didn't we see that work? It's because I was just in hope. Mm. And faith and hope are two different things. Yeah. Hope is actually the catalyst to get faith. Mm. You can't have faith for something you've never hoped no. for. First of all, you've got to hope. Mm. This, Like this woman, mm. she heard, oh, there's a hope. Yeah. She confessed. Mm. Now she's starting to act in faith. Mm. And 
so many people are just hoping yeah. for a healing mm. and they're not implementing their God-given faith mm. to see this thing come to pass. Yeah. Maybe this is a challenge to anybody listening, but examine your own heart. Are you are you just hoping or are you actually in faith? Mm. Do you know what the scripture says about your situation? Have you got confidence that you can... Apologies, dog barking in the background there. Are you actually standing in faith mm. and not just hope? Yeah. One night I was praying. And I, this thought, this kind of vision in my heart came to mind. I've shared this before on, a, on an audio teaching I did. But I could see myself sitting in a restaurant and a friend had treated me to dinner. There's just the two of us and we're in, the, in an expensive restaurant. And this picture, this kind of, this play almost mm. just started to, I could see it in my heart. Sitting there having dinner, my friend, very expensive meal, nice restaurant. And my friend says, I'll pay for us. And, oh, wonderful, thank you. Mm pays the bill or we'll you know we'll grab our jackets and we're leaving and a waiter comes over and he puts his hand on my shoulder and he forces me down to sit in the chair mm. and I'm like what are you doing and he says you've got to pay the bill my friend's just paid mm. the bill here's the receipt yeah I know but you've got to pay as well what do you mean I've got to pay as well can you imagine the resistance you'd mm. put up could you imagine the fight you would mm. there's no way you'd pay that mm. second. People are like, get your hand off my shoulder. Mm. I'm leaving the restaurant, the bill has been paid. Mm. We need to have that same mindset when it comes to healing. Amen. And this is what faith is. Mm. Faith is knowing that Jesus has paid the bill mm. and acting on what you know, mm. what you believe. Mm. You know the bill's been paid. Of course I'm not paying the bill twice. Yeah. We need to adopt this attitude when sickness tries to come into our body. Hold on a minute. Jesus said he paid for my sickness on mm. the cross. That Isaiah 53, verse 4, surely, certainly, without a doubt, yeah. the scripture says, Jesus has, mm. not something is, that isn't done, he has yeah. carried our sickness and disease. That mm. word carried is to say accept and to suffer. Mm. Now, why, if Jesus has suffered our sickness and disease, are we having to pay for it twice? Mm. And I saw the waiter like Satan saying, no, you're going to pay for this sickness mm. as well. Jesus might have paid for it, but you're going to pay for it as well. Mm. And I think to stand in faith is to start rejecting some of this. Yeah. And to say, no, mm. this isn't for me. To reach that point, like this woman did in Mark chapter 5, to think, I've had enough of being sick. I'm mm. going to crawl on my hands and knees because I believe if I can touch the hem of his garment, mm. it's different for us. Of course, we're not reaching out and touching something physical, mm. but we've got the same battle to believe his word. Yeah. You've got to be as resolute, mm. as determined, as focused mm. as to believe this word as mm. she was to touch the hem of his garment. Mm. And that's acting. Yeah. And that's this fourth stage in this process. You yeah. hear, you believe, you confess, mm. and then you act. Yeah. And a big part of acting is standing against the sickness that's trying to take hold of your body. Yeah. Yeah, and and it's knowing it's putting the seed in your heart. Yeah. Because how how are you going to believe it? What you don't know. Mm. Um. Yeah. That's as simple as that, really. You have to, and then once you know it, get revelation over it. Go to God, ask Him to reveal mm. Scripture to you. But then, then, you know, you need to move forward in 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 every area, not just sickness. If God's telling you to do something, if He's speaking to you about something, you know, meditate upon it. Read over what the word says. Put that in your heart um, throughout your day. Meditate upon that, and take action in yeah. whatever area. We mentioned a minute ago Hebrews eleven one. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. You yeah. can see this woman had gone beyond hope mm. because she said, "If I can touch the hem of his garment, oh. I shall, yeah. I will yeah. be made whole. It's going to happen." Mm. This wasn't just a vague hope yeah. in this woman's heart. She'd gone beyond hope. Mm. She's now in faith. Mm. And when you're in faith and you act on your faith, that's when you're going to see a miracle mm. come to pass. Mm. And there's a lot to wrap your head around there. There's a lot to take on board. Yeah. But let's just remind ourselves, you've got to hear the truth. Yeah. You've got to plant the seed in your heart. Mm. You've got to believe what the word says. Mm. You've got to confess it with your mouth. You've got mm. to act on your confession. Mm. And then you're going to receive what it is you're believing mm. for. Yeah. So I think that's such a... A really, really crucial, crucial lesson, mm. and these are just the basics of faith. Mm. But it's amazing how 
so many people and ourselves included we're not mm. putting ourselves on a yeah, pedestal we're no, not better not than anybody all. else in this we're just learning mm. but it's amazing how we're coming so short of what god wants us to have through a lack of knowledge the yeah. scripture says in hosea mm. my people perish for a lack, lack of, of knowledge. knowledge yeah peter says um, that we receive what god has got for us through the prom- promise of his word, mm. through the knowledge of these promises. Mm. And it's a lack of knowledge, really, that's just keeping us from receiving everything God's got for us. Yeah. We're going to leave it there. We're going to thank mm. you so much for tuning in. If you've got any questions, if if anything we've said has made you feel confused or uh, made you doubt something like a belief you'd held, then reach out to us, send yeah, us a DM, absolutely. put a comment on the message. Yeah. You know, We'd love to discuss this more in detail. Mm-hmm. If you want to do it privately, privately DM me and Sarah. Yeah. And we'd absolutely love to talk yeah. about this a little bit more. Yeah. So we want to thank you. We're releasing our podcast at 7pm on Sunday. Yeah. Join us for the next one. Yeah. And we'll see you next Sunday. 